I wanted to talk to you tonight. I'm off the boat right now and uh, sitting here by myself. I ride the motor bus of Gerald Majors. And I want to talk to you about faith and fog. And uh, I've been on the river all my life. And I have run the lower Mississippi River from Pilot Town all the way to Cairo in dead shut out fog. You can't see your hand in front of your face. I've made every bridge northbound. I didn't do all that southbound, but I've made every bridge. And I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people way better than I am. I'm just telling you what I've done because I'm trying to make a point on faith and fog. Fog and faith. And I taught myself how to run the radar by taking newspaper and taping it up as a young man and taping it up over the windows of the front windows so I couldn't see out and force myself to watch the radar. I did that a lot till I felt comfortable doing what I was doing. And so in running fog and running the lower Mississippi River and all these bridges, in doing that, I had to have confidence uh, in myself, number one, and I had to have confidence in that radar. And because I had done my homework and prepared myself, and because I had equipment that I had confidence in, then I have, through the years, run the river and done what I've done in fog. And I'm not just the greatest fog pilot, but I run a lot of fog. And But not everybody runs fog, and I'm not belittling them for not doing it or putting them down for not doing it, but there's a lot of reasons for not running fog. Either you don't have confidence in your radar, you don't have confidence in yourself, uh, there, whatever the reasons are, and they can be many and various. But I felt for the most part, most of the time, northbound, comfortable running in shutout fog. That's just me. But but I had faith, I had confidence, if you want to call it that. Faith and confidence go hand in hand. And as a Christian, I've studied my Bible. God has put me to the test. And I've put God to the test, if you want to say it like that, not in a boastful way. But, you know, I've paid my tithes. I've, um, I've been healed many times. And God has proved himself to me. And so as I would practice with the radar, when I was able to peek around the corner if I needed to, and see that I was okay, that I gained confidence. Well, as you live for God and serve God, and if you'll do that and believe God, and Hebrews chapter 11 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Now, when you get in shut-out fog, true shut-out fog, where there is no, you lose your sense of direction, you lose your equilibrium, you lose all of that because you, there's nothing to relate to. 
There's nothing to focus on. And back before the invention of the compass, the mariners were horrified of getting caught in fog because you're at the mercy. You, you have no ability to make a judgment call because you can't see and there's nothing to see, nothing to tangible, nothing you can, you, you, you just can't see. And you guys know that. And so they were horrified before a compass that would give them direction and show them the way even though they could not see the way. And so the Bible, hallelujah, it teaches us the way. There's a song the children sing that my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. It said, my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. And the Lord said that he would be a voice behind you that would say, this is the way and walk ye in thereat. But we have so many that do not hear. Jesus said they have eyes to see and they cannot see. And they have ears to hear and they cannot hear. And God, if we're going to walk in his precepts and walk and enter in at the straight gate, for broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat, and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. If we're going to enter in a hidden path, Job said there's a place that the vulture's eye hath never seen, and the old lion hath never walked thereon, nor the young lion. And it's a hidden path. And if we're going to see that, if we're going to walk that, in Psalms chapter 23, it says that, that the Lord will lead me into green pastures. And he walks beside me. And so when I cannot see and I'm in the fog of life and it's shut out and all I can hear are the voices and all I can discern is nothing and I am totally dependent on listening to God's voice to lead me through a dark place and shut out. And in order to do that, I have to listen to that voice. And I have to feel the touch of his hand that would guide me through what I cannot see. And it's the same way going up that river. I have to believe that that radar is right. If I don't believe the radar is right, then I'm just going to have to stop. Or if for some reason... Whatever the reason is, but if I'm going to run, then I have to believe. Can stop for a lot of reasons. But as a Christian, you can't stop. You have to keep running. And as a Christian, there's times that you have to deal with shut out fog in your life and in your spirit. And, and you don't know where to go or what to do or how to get there. And you must have confidence that that Bible is right. And you have to look back into your own personal life and say, God has done this for me before and God will do it again. And if God took care of me then, he'll take care of me now. I couldn't see then and I can't see now, and God is going to still take care of me.
and lead me through this. You got to do, I've spent countless, 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 countless hours, days in, days out, not just me, me and my partner, and go day in, day out, still shut out, three and four, five days at a time, and never see the Tonys, shut out, fog. And so that's the way it is in your life. And in order to run that fog and to keep moving, then I have to believe that that radar is right. Now, day and times, we have the electronic charts and GPSs, but that is not real. I love them. I wouldn't do nothing. I don't want to ever go back and not have them, but they're still not like the radar. The radar is real. That's what really is. The electronic chart is what you hope it is. But the radar is real. And it's showing it like it is. Even though the electronic chart is an awesome tool. And a really good tool. But I don't ever want just only the electronic chart. Because then I don't know what is really going on around me. I'm in a virtual world that is not real. But that radar is real and this and trying to live for God is real this is not a game it's not a virtual reality game where everything just seems to be what it is as opposed to being what it is I'd hate to think I had to eat virtual reality food that just looks like food but actually nothing but thin air not real. I want what is real. Jesus is real. The Bible is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Love is real. And this is real. This is not some game. It's not some fake. This is real. And God will see you through the fog. And God will see you through the night. And God will see you through the storm when you have no control and no power and no ability to save yourself, see where you're going, lead yourself, or lead anybody else. But when that radar is working properly and I have confidence in it and I've done my part and I've learned to use the thing, then I can pretty much safely just keep going because one morning the sun's going to come up or a northerner will blow in that night and it can be just shut out as shut out can be and 10 minutes later be as clear as a bell and the stars shining and the northern wind blowing and it'll blow it all off and that's the nature of fog. And so you can run this thing and you can carry on and you can keep moving if you have faith and you believe that that radar is right. And if you believe God is right, if you don't have faith in God, then you don't have faith in anything. If you don't believe that God can do it, then you can't even get on square one. You're just lost out in a deep fog. You're lost in the darkness of night and in the great storm out in the middle of the ocean with no markers and nowhere to go and nothing to do. <coughs> but in the fog, if you believe that that radar is right, then it will carry you all the way to Cairo and beyond if you know and can read it. Now, we must have faith. You've got to believe 
that God is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. You've got to be willing to put yourself at the mercy of God. When I am running in shutout fog with that radar, I am at the mercy of that radar and I have faith and believe within myself that that radar is going to keep working. And people say, well, might quit. That's true, it might. But within myself, I'm believing that that radar is going to keep working. And in 42 years of pilot house experience, I've never had a radar let me down in shut out fog. I'm not saying it can't. I'm saying it hasn't. But I also say this. God has never let me down in my life. Things did not always go the way I predicted or the way I thought they might go. But in the end, when it was all over up to this point in my life as an old man, God has always took care of me and my family. But we have to do our homework. and We have to have faith and believe that God's going to do it. And we have to be faithful. We have to study. We have to pray. We have to do all the things associated with being a Christian and, and not run around on a flat tire. You can't go far on a flat tire, folks. So you're going to have to make sure everything is in proper working order. If not, you're just not going to be able to keep moving. You're going to be on the side of the road. And there's a many a man that started out for Jesus that tonight is sitting on the side of the road, broke down. Now, if he will, Jesus will come to the rescue. But you've got to have faith and believe that he loves you and believe that he will come and rescue you. And so just like myself in that radar and running up the river, I believe that that radar is right. And I believe that that radar will not tell me wrong and that I can continue going up the river. And I've never had an accident in the fog ever. Never even broke a wire. So I have confidence that God will take care of me. And you've got to believe that God, the radar, the great captain of your ship, you've got to believe that he will do that and that he will take care of you so that you can keep moving and stay on the road and on your way to heaven. There's an old song that says, I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Well, that's what we're doing. We're on our way to heaven and there's no, no exits, no stops. You got to just keep moving. Now you can get off. A lot of ways to get off the road to heaven. Just pull off and start wandering, lost in the wilderness of sin. Just get out of the car and start walking right out in the middle of the wilderness with no directions and no way to know what to do or how to do. And you just run from your problems there on the side of the road and, and as a pole where you should have stayed right there on the side of the road and repented and asked God to help you and he would have sent help and got you back on your way. But so many, they abandon the car on the side of the road and strike out through the wilderness lost to never be found and to die wondering and circling in the wilderness. Have faith in God. 
believe that God will take care of you and see you through whatever's going on in your life. Hold on to the Bible. Hold on to God's people. Hold on to the truth. And the truth will set you free. I appreciate all you guys. We're starting a new year. We'll be having our our pilot's picnic in, Udo, in Lake Village, Arkansas, April the 27th. And everyone is welcome. And we hope to see you there maybe. And hope this was uh, some help to you tonight. And God bless you.